英語聞き流し10分間、名作リスニング、英語テキストと MP3 ダウンロード、その他の物語は、ホームページよりご利用いただけます。88thpp.com、88thpp.com。I ask you to keep what you are about to read and hear to yourself since it's regarding an illegal activity I was once engaged in. Until I was about 16 years old, my parents, my younger sister and I had visited my grandparents' home every year during the New Year's. Limited for that time of the year, a quiet countryside house of my grandparents would turn into a family casino. It consisted of three different areas. In the card game area, which was the living room, a card game called Kaba that is similar to Blackjack would be played. In the coin game area, which was my grandparents' room, would be for a game called Mortar Roller. And the break area, which was the dining room, would be for those who didn't like gambling or who needed food and drink. It would be open for 24 hours but only the family members could play. The coin game was organized by my grandmother. She set up a huge china mortar for sesame on the tatami floor and the players would sit around it on the floor. They would take turns and roll a 10 yen coin. Which is worth about 10 cents, inside the mortar. The coin rolled along the side of the round mortar, descending gradually toward the bottom. If it landed on other coins at the bottom, the player could get them. Although the game was simple, we would be absorbed in playing and our heads and eyes were rolling with a coin above the mortar. My cousin was good at it with her own devised technique to throw in a coin. I would also win snugly with my fixation on money. Beside the excited circle, my grandfather and my father, Who were not interested in gambling, would talk over Japanese tea that my grandfather would make. My grandmother would start fretting after midnight and tell us to be quiet because she had believed that the military policemen could bust in with bayonets. We laughed at her anachronism while seeing her try to meet the mortar and still live the World War II era. She upgraded the mortar one year by putting a round piece of cardboard near the bottom. The mortar's floor was raised and became wider and flatter so that it was harder to make the coin lie on top of the other. More coins to take would be left at the bottom, and the game got more exciting. Those were such fond memories, and I can still hear the sound of a rolling coin inside a mortar during New Year's. Later on, the joyful grandparents' house was burned down by my grandmother's carelessness with a candle. It's gone forever. Audiobook Japanese Dream by Hitomi Woods on sale at online stores or apps. Apple, Audible, Google Play, Nook Audiobooks, 43 available distributors in total. It's about a strange sister I encountered back in my school days. Since I became the class clown at school, I was quite popular back then, not only among the students but also among the teachers. When I needed to see a teacher at the hallway in front of the teacher's office, other teachers would come out of the office to talk with me. They would stand in a circle around me and laugh at my jokes and stories. Inevitably, it was always noisy wherever I showed up. The vice principal was a stern, rigid teacher called Sister Mari Stella. She was the oldest sister at school and dressed in a traditional, old fashioned Catholic gown. She was strict to students and teachers alike. Everybody tried to keep away from her because she always reproved someone for something. She would appear wherever people were buzzing to shut them up. She had recognized that I was often a seismic center of the buzz and given me a look of you again. Every time the teachers were cracking up with me in front of the teacher's office, she poked her long veiled head out of the office. That was a signal for the end of the show. Teachers would disperse quickly while I stopped talking. Sometimes we failed to notice her and she stood behind the circle listening to me. The moment someone spotted her, they would walk away. In those cases, she would ask me what I was talking about. I would apologize and leave. And one thought occurred to me she didn't come out to reprove us. She might want to join us. Even after I realized that, I had no way to keep talking once other teachers ran away. As a result, we just kept leaving when she came up. And one day, when we were scattering at the sight of her as usual, she grabbed my arm. She said to me, That's it. You hate me, don't you? I know you hate me. I know, because I hate you too. 
Over her shoulder was a statue of the Virgin Mary with a plaque saying love and humanity. It was the most inconsistent scene I had ever experienced. Months later, there came a general school cleaning day. I was unlucky enough to be assigned to the school cafeteria of which Sister Mari Stella took charge. As if she got a golden opportunity, she made a slave of me. She chose the dirtiest floor just for me and made me crawl to clean up thoroughly, yelling not enough. Do it over. Repeatedly. I felt her revenge so strongly. Given the hatred and now the revenge, I deepened the mystery of Catholic sisters. Audiobook, Japanese Dream by Hitomi Woods on sale at online stores or apps. Apple, Audible, Google Play, Nook Audiobooks, 43 available distributors in total. It's about my betrayal against Sister Judith at junior high. As all the people around me professed Buddhism and Shintoism, I had never been exposed to Christianity until I entered junior high school. The junior high I attended was a private Catholic convent school and most teachers were nuns. Since I had never had any contact with nuns before, they were nothing but mysterious to me. They lived together in a convent next to the school and wore a veil. They were called like Sister Catherine or Sister Patricia although they were Japanese. Until I got used to them, I had always wondered about the small basics. Do they have an ordinary Japanese name? Do they really stay single for life? Are they bold under a veil? Yes, yes, and no, I gradually learned the answers. I had studied English quite hard to catch up with other students who came from the same convent's elementary school that gave them a head start in English education. One teacher, called Sister Judith, happened to know that and kindly found a pen pal for me. While students mostly didn't like sisters, she was an exception. She was popular because she was friendly and beautiful. Students also respected her since she graduated from one of the most renowned universities in Japan and as the smartest sister at school. The school had the very rigid rules for uniform. If an irregular bag was spotted, it would be confiscated. I carried my personal small bag into school one day in addition to the big uniform bag and Sister Judith caught me. She said she had to confiscate it and I begged her not to. I promised her I wouldn't use it for school ever again. She decided to overlook my breach for once out of consideration for my emotional plea. As a stupid teenager, I was defiant to pretty much everything. I believed nothing good existed in this world. So I took my irregular bag out of my uniform bag again as soon as I passed through the school gate after school that day. I was walking toward the bus stop with the bag dangling. Someone called out my name from behind. It was Sister Judith. She didn't return to the convent as usual, and left for an errand on that particular day. She didn't confiscate my bag, though. Instead, she was crying. I trusted you and that was why I let you go. But you betrayed my trust. I'm bitterly disappointed in you, she said quietly and walked away. I felt it was much better that she yelled at me and took away my bag. Audiobook, Japanese Dream by Hitomi Woods on sale at online stores or apps. Apple, Audible, Google Play, Nook Audiobooks, 43 available distributors in total. I report the true culprit of my skin trouble. From January of last year to October, I'd had terrible skin trouble on my face. I had eczema mainly on my cheeks that were itchy and peeling. The condition was too bad to be covered up with makeup and I was in a mess. Since I'd never had that kind of problem before, I couldn't figure out the cause. Eventually I attributed it to an allergy to basil pasta sauce. But I recently ascertained the true culprit and need to clear the basil sauce's name. My apartment building has a spa which fee is included in the monthly maintenance fee from the resident. The privilege of using it with no holds barred and the fact I'm cheap send me to the spa every morning and evening. Not using it is a big waste of money for me. At the spa, a hot tub, a jacuzzi, a sauna and a cold water tub are regularly available. And during the busy times such as the summer holidays and the winter skiing season, an extra hot tub is operated. When I looked for the solution for my skin trouble, I tried everything including shortening my spa time a little. After the trouble went away in October, 
It reappeared as soon as I started taking an extra hot tub at the spa in December. The cause wasn't the basil sauce. I took a bath too much and too long every day. Sweating too excessively and having too much metabolism seemed to cause skin trouble. I knew moderation in all things, but had never known it was also true for a spa and metabolism. I thought they were good for health and the more the better. I've read or heard everywhere that metabolism is essential to health, and had never thought it also required moderation. It amounts to this, that I was too healthy. I reduced time and the frequency for the spa drastically and my skin trouble quickly disappeared. The free spa was my favorite relaxation. Now spending less time at the spa every day, I feel as if I leave an all-you-can-eat buffet after only a few bites each time. My good old days of sweating in a sauna as much as I want and relaxing in a jacuzzi as long as I want are over. And to make matters worse, now that I'm careful not to sweat too much, I've gained a few pounds. Audiobook Japanese Dream by Hitomi Woods on sale at online stores or apps. Apple, Audible, Google Play, Nook Audiobooks, 43 available distributors in total. Hachi Hachi T H P P dot com